What you guys see here is our third customer wrapped rules box from Jim Cantor. Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure and for those that have seen box one and box two, you'll know why I'm excited. Jim Cantor happened to go in one of his bank branches about a month ago and asked if they had a couple of boxes of bank wrapped pennies and they said they only had customer wrapped. After inquiring about them, they let him know that it was an elderly couple that was turning in all of their pennies and that they were gonna be sending them in box by box. So Jim grabbed two boxes, hunted the first and was amazed at what he found and decided to trade me a box to make sure that I had one of the good boxes. If you haven't watched that video, I have a link up here or down below. I had so much fun hunting that box, I begged Jim that if he ever gets any more boxes like that to let me know, and he said, Rob, as a matter of fact, this couple's gonna be sending in lots more boxes over the next few months. So a few weeks later, Jim went back to the bank, got a couple of boxes, and hunted another one, had a great box, and gave me the second box, and I kinda got the better deal on that one because my box was ridiculous. You guys, if you missed that, it had that 19, 101 Indian had sent BU Blazer, which I submitted to PCGS. It's been a few weeks later and Jim got two more boxes and said, Rob, I found a 1909 SVDB in my box and I can't believe it. He sent me pictures in an email and I was like floored. He said he had a second box and he was tempted not to send it. And I said, then don't send it. But out of the kindness of his heart, a few days later, he sent me a box. I don't think I'll find as good of a box as you had this time. I think you're probably going to win it with that 1909 SVDB. But I'm excited to get in this box. I have talked on an intro long enough. You guys are like, Rob, open the box already. I'll do that. I'll keep my mouth shut. Let's just hunt this. I'm assuming it's going to be another great box because Jim's third box had a lot of blazers as well so we're probably going to have some BU wheat scents and who knows what else let me get the top of this box open pull out the penny box inside and I'll be right back all right we got it out of all of the bubble wrap all of the Safeway grocery store bags and finally to the box and Jim didn't mess around this thing is taped up like Fort Knox his note says mom and pop rolls of course, the exclamation points are appropriate. Last one till they return from vacation. Good luck, Rob. Happy hunting and have a great time, Jim C. Yeah, so the couple brought in a couple more boxes and told the teller that they were going on vacation for a little over a month and that when they get back, they'll start up again bringing the pennies. So this is the final customer wrap rolls box from Jim. Maybe forever, but at least for a while, it's up to Jim. Either way, brother, let me go ahead and cut this tape around it, and then we'll pop the top and see what it looks like. The tape is cut, and uh, let's take a look. Looks like customer wrapped rolls to me, and the same kind. Let's set the box up. I see all 50 rolls accounted for. It's time to see what we get. We're on roll four. The first three rolls, no wheat cents, but they did have two 1959 Denvers. I bring in though, because we finally have our first wheat cent of the customer wrap box, and it looks like it could be old. It is old. I think it's, yeah, it is 1920 Philadelphia. Pretty slick, but first one on the board is a 20s. We're on roll number six, and I'm not gonna lie, with the lack of good finds, I was thinking that maybe our luck on the customer wrap rolls has ran out. Of course, I'm only six rolls into the box, but the rolls just didn't feel like the last couple. Until now. We finally ran across another red blazer. 1956 Denver. And that's what we found a lot of, 56 and 58s. So that's a good sign. Makes me happy. We might have a good box yet. 
Same roll, and I can see the front of this coin, and I think that is going to be a 1912S. 1912S is a semi-key date, and uh, unbelievable. It is pretty slick, but it's definitely a 1912S. And if I recall, other than an 09S VDB, I'm only missing a 12S from my book. Yes, sir. We will fill that spot next. Of course, my 14D is ugly, but I have one. Holy cow. What a find. Roll seven. Another beauty. 1954S. Wow. Same roll, and we've got a 1955 Denver right behind it. And potentially, no, 1967 was some kind of damage. Either way, I'll take it. We already have three Blazers, two Oldies, one's a 12S. Still the same roll, and I missed it, but there's another wheat scent in here. And that's a 53S. Roll number eight, and uh, judging by the edges, there could be some oldies, and I already saw the front one. We've got a 1926 Philly. A 1919 Philly. A 1926 Philly. A beat up 56 Denver. A 1936, I'll check that for the DDO. Just want to make sure I don't miss any live since the roll was pretty good. A 1938 Philly. A 1956 Denver. And a 1957 Denver. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more wheat cents in that roll. And for sake of time, I'll only do updates every 10 rolls on total wheat cents. We did find one more wheat cent in that roll, a 51 Denver. Nine in the roll. 10 roll wrap up, 15 wheat cents, including the 1912S semi-key date, and three Blazers. Just grabbed roll number 11, spilled it out, and I can see several wheat scents, so I figured I would just go ahead and film it with you guys and catch them all together. Here's one right here. It's a pretty nice 1940 with some toning. Take that, beautiful. Number two of the roll, 1946 Philly. 1956 Denver. Uh, that's a 59, right? Yeah, 59. Old eyes are failing me in my age, but let's keep looking. There's another one. 56 Denver, that's number four of the roll. Number five of the roll is going to be a 1950S. And a 1929 for number six. And a Canadian, number one of the box, 1968. Six more wheat cents. Roll 13 and the second coin in is a stunner. That was the top coin. Almost an ender. Look at this 1930. Wow. That will upgrade my album for sure. Roll 14 at three more wheat cents. A 1934P, a 1947S, 
and a 57D. Roll 15, seven more weed cents. 50S, 50S, 53S, 55D, 54S, 56P, and 57D. Roll 17, two more weed cents. 52D, 56D. Roll number 18, and I'll always film the Blazers. 1958 Denver. Roll 18 also had four more weed cents. 45P, 45S, 50D, and a trashed 53S. Roll 19, got another beautiful weed scent. 1953 Denver. Same roll, and we finished it with a 35P and a 39P. And after the 20th roll, I'll give you a total wrap up. We're on roll 20, and so far we pulled out a 1955D, but we've got another beautiful weed scent here. And that's a 47P. We'll take that and see if there's any more. There's more. We added a 44D, and now we're gonna add a 57D. We're done with 20 rolls. We have 47 wheat cents. A whole bunch from the 40s, 50s, and some in the 30s. We got that teens, the 1912S semi-key date, and then we have all of those blazers right there, which of course I will show you at the end. Three Canadians, 559s, only one nice Lincoln Memorial Copper Cent, a 63D, not the DDO, and 169S, also not the DDO. A lot of copper already, only 40% done with the box. We're on pace for north of 100 once again. We're on roll 25, and I don't even know when the last time I got a wheat scent was. It seems like the box got cold. But I bring you in because take a look at this. A 1931S. It doesn't have the best detail. It looks like it might have some damage. Yeah, it looks like it might have been subjected to fire or something. But this is a 1931S. Now, I already have a great one in my collection, but key date, 866,000. Even in this kind of condition, I'll take it. I will take it no matter what. I have found three of these now, believe it or not. One is in my collection. One I sold after getting graded. And now I have this one. Unbelievable. I thought the box was getting cold and that just made it hot again. Same roll as the 31S and we had a pretty nice 1967, but right behind it, a really nice 1956 Denver. Roll 28 and uh, we've already found a couple of wheat cents again. A 1944D, not the D over S and a 53S. I bring in though because I just uncovered a couple of shiny ones. This one, a 1958 Philly. And we already saw this one by the obverse. Another 1956 Denver. Man, we've got a lot of shinies in this box. Just over halfway and a couple of great dates. Let's find more. Roll 29 just dumped it into my hand and we've got a steel scent, it looks like. Oh, and it's a beauty. Let me switch hands here. That is a nice one. It doesn't look remanufactured either. That is a nice 1943D. Let's check it for any of the re-punched mint mark. Got something going on there, but it doesn't look like the RPM. Either way, wow, that is a nice 1943 very beautiful, I won't touch it too much more. Holy cow, that'll be a nice upgrade to the album, I'm sure. Same roll as that beautiful Steely, and we've already pulled out a 1957 Denver, but look at this. A beautiful 1950 Denver. Love it. We're on roll 30, and I'll do a recap after this roll, but I'm bringing in because uh, another nice 1958 Denver. 
added to the shinies, and we had five more common date 40s and 50s wheat scents to go along with the board. 30 rolls hunted, 64 wheat scents. We got 17 in those 10 rolls, but we got a stunner of a Steely 1943D and a 31S key date wheat scent in those rolls, along with a few more bright and shinies. 64 wheat scents, six Canadians, one young head. We are now up to 759Ds, still only one really nice 63D and only one 69S. So light on the bright and shiny copper scents from the 70s and 60s and light on the 69Ss, but not light in the fines yet. We're averaging about 21 per row. So we're on pace for about 100, 105 if it holds true. Let's keep looking. Roll 31, continuing on with goodies. We did find a 1910 that looks shiny and a decent strike, but unfortunately I think it's been treated with ketchup or some kind of acid because it looks clean, but it looks cleaned. On top of that though, we just found a 1958 that has not been treated and it's a nice one. 1958 Denver, another one for the top of the board. Roll 32 yielded a 1939 Philly and an almost beautiful 1954. It's not bad, don't get me wrong. Maybe not as nice as them. We'll put it at the top of the board. Roll 34, four more weed cents. 50S, 51S, a 52D, and a 57D. Roll 35, early in the roll. Another beautiful 1956 Denver. Roll 37, we've already pulled out a couple of wheat scents, a 57D and a 58D, and the last roll had a 34P. But I bring you in because another shiny. And it's another 1954, Philadelphia. And since I have you here, I do see another one right there. We'll go ahead and take a look-see. 1925. Philadelphia. 40 rolls hunted. We have now found 81 wheat cents, which is 17 more. It's dropping our average. I don't know if we're going to get 19 in that last set of 10 to get to the magical 100, but already been a great box. But we do have now seven Canadians, still 759s. We have now upped the nicer Lincoln Memorial cents to three and check it out. We have got five 1969 S's after only having one through 30 rolls. So maybe we'll get a few more chances at that DDO. The copper cup's almost full, so I may need to get the copper bowl out. But in the meantime, let's get to roll 41. Next. Roll 43, the box is almost done, but it's not done. Giving us beauties. 1956 Denver. Well, every time I think the box has gotten cold, we get a nice find. We're on roll 47, and we haven't had a lot of finds since roll 40. But look at what we just found. A 1924D, another semi-key date, 2.5 million minted. Let's confirm it under the scope. Yep, 1924 Denver. Pretty slick, but it doesn't matter. It is a semi-key date, and we'll take it. Same roll, we just pulled a 1953D, but I bring you in because another blazer. 1958 Denver. Roll 48 already has three wheat cents, a 44D, a 45S, and a 40... 6S, man, I thought that said 16 and I missed it. It's 46S, but we've got another blazer here. And it's a 55 Denver. And I do see another wheat scent right here. 47S, all years in a row. Roll 49, a few more wheat scents, a 36P and a 56P. But another 56 nicey. Last roll of the box and all good things must come to an end. We have found a 1955 Denver and another stunner, a 1958 
Philadelphia. Let me finish up this roll, sort the finds, and provide a wrap up. All right, we have finished that customer wrapped rolls box number three. We ended with 97 wheats. We got three in the teens, only one up here because a couple are down here. We'll cover those in a second. Six in the 20s, again, only five up here, one is down there. 12 in the 30s, 11 up here, one down here. 18 in the 40s, we got 16 up here and two down here, which we'll cover. And in the 50s, 35, all right there, except for none of that includes the shinies, which were there were 23 of them. Let's run through them. 1930, Philly. 1947 Philly, a 50 Denver, a 53 Denver, a bunch of 54s, where it looks like we got two S's and two P's. We got two 55s, both Denver, a bunch of 56s, Denver, Denver, Philly, Denver, 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 157 Denver, and then 58s, we got a Denver, a Philly, a Denver, a Denver, a Philly, and a Denver. Wow. Maybe a few of these upgrade my own. I'll have to take a look, but nothing in the 50s should. As far as the finds of the box, I only pulled out the 1910 and 1940 because they are possibly better than my album. Even though this has probably been cleaned, I believe my 1910 is pretty toasty. So toasty or not, at least it's shiny. I might switch it out. This 43D steel scent is a thing of beauty and I love that it's not remanufactured or repurposed. So in its original state, it should upgrade. A 1912S semi-key date, can't get mad at that. A 24D semi-key date and a 31S key date. I say four great finds to the box. Two decent ones, a lot of shinies, which are always nice, and a lot of wheats. We ended up with more than a cup of copper. I had to use the bowl again. We got eight Canadians, one only of the young head. We ended up with 10 59s, five shinies that were not wheat scents that I'll check against my album and likely roll up. And then we finished with a whopping 769 S's. Not as many as that first box, but definitely a respectable amount for sure. Jim, once again, thank you for the box. We got some goodies. I'm super excited. I cannot wait until possibly there's more boxes to hunt, but if you're done trading, I understand. Either way, I had a lot of fun and I got a lot of wheats. If you enjoyed this custom wrapped rolls penny hunt from Jim once again, number three, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and as always, everyone, happy hunting and thanks for watching.